I've been grinding a lot of Team Affinity Season 1 Chapter 2, which means I've tested a lot of the cards. So today, I'm going to go through and rank all 30 of the Chapter 2 cards that you need to use in MLB The Show 24. Albeit, I haven't tested every single one. I've got to play a lot of rank to really give these cards a full go. But first impressions, these are going to be my takes. So let's just not waste any time and hop on into the tier list. Keep in mind, I think most of these cards are going to be very viable for your team. There aren't really many or really any cards that I wouldn't recommend at all. Just because they're 93 overalls. A lot of players can get them for free just for playing the game. And there's a lot of value in that. But keep in mind, I'm ranking cards for Hall of Fame difficulty. So the main part of rank that people are really sweating their teams at with so you got to have a good team for that. Higher contact and the vision, different things like that all matter when you're sweating a bit more in ranked. So in my F tier, I only have three different cards. So Dan Rafaela, Daniel Vogelback, and Luis Angel Acuna. I think they definitely could have some play, especially on All-Star. But Vogelback is definitely too low on that contact versus both sides to really be a top tier for his baseman. Acuna and Rafaela are just a little bit low in the overall hitting attributes, especially Rafaela. But they could have some swings that are probably fun. Like, I've still hit some really good swings with Rafaela in particular, but I wouldn't recommend them the most unless you really need a different type of shortstop or really just utility type guy if you're going for one of these guys. But in the D tier, we have a little bit more of a bump up, but still these cards have a fundamental problem with them that keeps them from being top, top tier. For example, Chili Davis is a switch hitter, an okay fielder. It's actually very, very good versus righties. He got like 120 something contact, which is very high for this point of the game, but he's a switch hitter and he's not great versus lefties. And the fielding isn't really great, especially for a primary center fielder. So I wouldn't really be using him unless you just like his swing and you just need to get him in your lineup. And it probably goes the same with Tim Salmon, where he's actually a solid hitter and an okay fielder. Not really impressive enough to really be that great. Drew Jones is great on the fielding, low on the contact. He's like a second Byron Buxton. But if you're playing on All-Star, running him with that Byron Buxton boost, you have some unreal outfield defense if you're running him out there. But keep in mind, that contact is going to be low for Hall of Fame. It's going to be tough to use. Noble Meyer as a pitcher is interesting because he does have like that basic five pitch mix, but he doesn't seem to have anything extraordinary. So in terms of the starting pitchers, he's probably one of the lowest tier ones in my opinion, but I might have to do some more testing of him. Who knows if he has something funky to him. And Arelvis Martinez actually could be a good third baseman, but he's a little platoon heavy, a little too weak versus righties. And you got to be good versus both sides to be a good starter, but... He could have some play if you happen to really like his swing. And then now we have the C tier. We kind of keep moving our way up bit by bit. I think these cards could actually have some play on their own. I don't think they're going to be super high priority like some of the cards in the B and above. But, you know, Alex Gordon is good enough on the contact, power, and defense. And I actually like his swing. And he also gets a good amount of quirks, which is an underrated thing that people overlook when using cards. Gordon could have some play if you're... Really need to dig down into the depth for good outfielders. Jacob Wilson is good on the contact, pretty good on the power for a contact type hitter, and it's good enough defense for a shortstop. Thing is, I, I like out of contact hitters a little bit more contact, but I have to do some more testing of him. He actually might end up being really glitchy. I hate using that word, but sometimes players like him with the high contact and good enough power play a little better than we expect. And then there's Will Myers, who... Actually not bad for a first baseman, pretty good on the contact, well I should say pretty good, but like at that baseline of like what I'm looking for at the very least for Hall of Fame, you can throw him in the corner outfield. I'd say his big thing is that he has a little bit more speed for a first baseman. That is actually not that unvaluable, it's actually not bad to have. But now we have our B tier, and I would say these are like pretty solid cards to try, like if you're just starting off in the game and you're looking for immediate upgrades for your team, these could be good players to use if you don't have that large of a selection of players. Greg Vaughn is a solid option, especially if you're going to use the Bucks and Boost. You can play him in the field, but if you're not, I wouldn't recommend him anywhere besides DH, but good enough for the contact, very good power. You can get away with that hitting, but the fielding is going to be sketchy unless you're using the Buxton Boost. 
Joey Manessis is a pretty solid first base option. You know, I like his swing typically on his cards, but he's a little bit better versus lefties and righties. Not that well-rounded of a hitter. Michael Bush is the opposite, better versus righties, not great versus lefties, but good enough. And same with Xavier Isaac down here. But, you know, Michael Bush and Isaac actually have some pretty fun swings and Bush can play something besides first base. So that could be pretty valuable to you, especially if you're looking for a solid card to try. I just don't think they're super high priority in comparison to the A and the S tier options I have. J.R. Richard might end up being a valid pitcher. On Hall of Fame and Legend difficulty, they're a big part of the game is PCI shrinking when you throw away sliders. It's just a part of the game and you really notice it on those difficulties, albeit I think on Legend especially, it's a big problem. So something like J.R. Richard with a primary slider and very high velo slider could have some play. It just his downside is he doesn't have much change of speed. Like all of his pitches are above 90 miles an hour. So he, he might not be the best in all cases. Chase Dollander as well as a five pitch pitch mix. And I think he actually gets a pretty fast slider. And I like high velocity sliders. They play very well in those higher difficulties part of the game. They just don't really feel as floaty. You know, they have more of that sweep to them and they are tougher to hit. So that's why I have Dollander here in the B. I think he could have some play as a starting pitcher. But now we have the A tier. And I think these are going to be very solid options for most players. And this is from testing a lot of their swings. Most of these guys I used a good bit in my grind so far. Um, in terms of the best in this class, Dominguez and Josh Bell are going to be valuable for being good switch hitters. They're good enough versus both sides. And even though Jason Dominguez is a little low on the contact versus the one side, I think lefties, he gets a smaller strike zone to a similar light of Jose Ramirez. And players like that who people typically like, like Tamar Johnson from the very beginning of the game. So I've loved him so far. And Josh Bell also has enough on the hitting attributes at first base. He seems like potentially a direct upgrade from like a Tony Clark if you were rocking him at first. I think those could be some solid players. I think Manuel Rodriguez and Kirstead are actually two interesting outfielders. Rodriguez gets the Buxton boost if you happen to really like that. He has a really nice swing. It reminds me a lot of Cedric Mullins. And both him and Kierstad are pretty much good on the five tools. Good contact, power, defense, and speed, where they are very valid to run in the outfield. Like, you're not going to get hurt with their defense at all, I don't think. And they're pretty solid bets. I've actually liked their swings so far. And then Eddie Matthews is an interesting third base option. I like his swing. This is a card I typically do well with. And the contact is, again, good enough with good power, like a very solid, well-rounded hitter that I feel like for third base, a lot of people will like to try. And then Stephen Kwan actually could have some play. He's got great defense in the outfield. He's a contact type hitter, which will play on Hall of Fame. It might not be the best of the best, but the high contact is definitely good for that difficulty. His only downside is the lack of power, but I think he could have some play, actually. And then if I were to recommend any starter, um, one of them is Justin Verlander. He's got a pretty fast slider, no outlier on this card. But if you don't throw the four seam fastball too much, I think he could be very solid. He's got more of like a control type card rather than his super high velo type that we're used to. I think that slider of his is probably the key pitch. Um, so I think him, he could be solid along with Mick Abel. McAble has that generic pitch mix with the sinker, slider, curveball, changeup, cur all that. But his his release is interesting. I think um, the, the way he releases the ball, it's easy for hitters to get underneath it. So he might be someone that plays a little funkier than we expect. And yeah, that basically goes through this tier. Um, the only reason Kenley Jansen isn't S tier is because he has a two seam instead of a sinker. That is a big problem. The sinker is just so much better of a pitch. But the two seam could have some play. The high velo cutter could be good. Relievers are always good. And Kenley is good enough where you could throw him in your bullpen. He probably won't be as good as like a normal Kenley Jansen though. And then the S tier of players, in my opinion, Joe Torrey and Mitch Garver, I think are going to have a lot of play. Both of them can play catcher. Joe Torrey is the more high contact option. The contact and power mix that he has at this point in the game is actually very solid. 
He's a lot like a righty Joe Maurer as a catcher, but less defense. But since he has less defense, he gets a little bit more in the power. So I think he will be very solid. Could even play him at third. And a Mitch Garver, in my opinion, is a fantastic swing. And just a few parallels in gets like nearly over 100 on the contact versus right, power versus right, and the power versus left. I think he's a fantastic choice at catcher. Noah Schultz, I think, is going to be the key pitcher in this team of Finley Drop. He's a tall six foot seven pitcher. He's got a slider and slurve mix. He doesn't have the best of velocity, but the way he releases the ball is a bit funky. I think he's going to be the best pitcher of this bunch. And then Rob Dibble is going to be the best reliever. I mean, Dibble is always going to play. He's got enough on the attributes that the outlier four seam, the slower cutter and the slider. He's going to be a very good reliever at this point in the game. So those four are definitely the bunch I would recommend the most. I think they'll have a lot of play in most lineups. And like I'd like to do in all my tier list videos, I'd like to show you what my current team looks like. As you see, I have some team of indie guys on there that I'm trying, like Mitch Garver and Jason Dominguez. When I get Joe Torre, I'll probably try him at third base. But yeah, I don't use every single team of Finney card. I don't have a place for every single one of them, unfortunately. But that's the beauty of this game. You have so many options to choose from. You probably could find a couple swings that you really like. Like for me, that's Mitch Garver. And you just find a way to plop them in your lineup. And if you're looking for general tips to complete this team of Finney, I would recommend doing all of the extreme moments if you can. Um, do the, the conquest maybe one time. It's not necessary, but you can. Um, do the extreme showdown. And then I felt like doing the regular showdown until I got a boss pack and each division was the play. Just get one of each boss. Um, and some of the divisions choose a pitcher and some choose a hitter. And just hop on into the online events or just use those cards in ranked and then complete the player-based missions with them. That made life a lot easier for me rather than sitting there and doing showdown over and over and over again. So, yeah, those are my thoughts on Team Affinity Season 1, Chapter 2. That's very confusing to say. Let me know in the comments which cards you've been enjoying so far in the Team Affinity drop. And keep an eye out on this channel for more tier lists here soon. I will be doing some more larger scale tier lists in the coming weeks as I give these cards more of a go. But I appreciate you all watching. Have a great rest of your day. And I will see you again on next one.